When we're outside, standing in a wide open space, the ground seems pretty flat. We even use flat charts. But as you know, the Earth is actually a sphere, or close to it. As pilots, we need to be able to reference precise positions on a round surface. To identify specific points on a sectional chart, as well as out in the field, we use a grid system made up of lines of latitude and longitude. On sectional charts, this issue of latitude and longitude can be a bit confusing at first, but there are some very good reasons why you need to understand the concept. Maybe you need to define a location in a flight plan, but there are no good visual landmarks available. Or maybe you need to indicate a location for an airspace authorization or waiver request. In either case, using latitude and longitude, you can define any specific point on Earth with a simple set of two numbers. Now there's another reason why you need to know this stuff. It appears on your FAA written exam, and that alone is a compelling reason for you to dig in. Lines of latitude encircle the globe parallel to the equator. On charts, they're the horizontal lines. Think of the word lateral to describe their lateral or sideways orientation. Lines of longitude connect the north and south poles. They're shown on charts as vertical lines. Lines of latitude and longitude are perpendicular to each other. We can specify any point on Earth by the intersection of a line of longitude and a line of latitude. And here's how that's done. We all know what the equator is. It's the horizontal line around the Earth that splits the globe into the northern and southern hemispheres. Here in the U.S., we're in the northern hemisphere. The equator is the starting point for the latitude numbering system. The units for this system are called degrees. So the equator has a latitude of zero degrees. It's the starting point, remember? Other lines of latitude march toward the poles parallel to the equator. At the North Pole, the latitude is 90 degrees, and because it's in the Northern Hemisphere, we call it 90 degrees north. Halfway between the equator and the North Pole, we have the latitude of 45 degrees north. This line runs from Maine to Oregon, going right across downtown Minneapolis. Running pretty much to the center of the continental U.S. is the latitude of 37 degrees north. It's the line of latitude that separates Oklahoma from southern Kansas. So, in between the equator and the North Pole, we have lines of latitude numbered between 0 and 90. This number tells us where the lines exist along the Earth's north-south axis. Now, on to longitude. As we said, lines of longitude connect the poles. Like latitude, longitude is specified in degrees. And just as the equator is the origin for the latitude numbering system, we have an origin for the lines of longitude. This is the zero-degree longitude, and it runs north-south through Greenwich, England. This is called the prime meridian and splits the Earth into the eastern and western hemispheres. That puts the continental United States in the northern hemisphere as well as in the western hemisphere. Here it is on the sectional chart for the entire country. It's roughly bounded on the east and west by the 69 degree west and the 124 degree west lines of longitude. North and south, it's bounded approximately by the 47 degree north and 25 degree north lines of latitude. If we zero in on this spot, roughly in the center of the country, we zoom into the border between Kansas and Missouri, where the 95 degrees west longitude intersects the 39 degree north latitude, the chart pinpoints a spot on the Earth's surface, just west of Kansas City. Degrees are subdivided into smaller increments called minutes. Now don't get confused, these minutes measure distance, not time. There are 60 minutes in each degree. Minutes are shown on the lines of latitude and longitude as small tick marks. Every fifth tick mark is slightly larger, and every tenth mark is larger still. This makes it a little easier to count them on the chart. Counting the tick marks, this shows the latitude of 39 degrees, one minute north. Here's the latitude of 39 degrees, five minutes north. And here's the latitude at 39 degrees, 10 minutes north. The same thing works for longitude. Here's the longitude for 95 degrees, one minute west. Here's the longitude for 95 degrees, five minutes west. And here's the longitude for 95 degrees, 10 minutes west. Now if we go over three more minutes, or tick marks, we find the line of longitude that crosses the Lawrence Municipal Airport. All we have to do is to determine its latitude, and we've got it pinpointed on the surface. Count up one minute of latitude from the 39 minute line, and we see it's at 39 degrees, one minute north, and there we have it. The coordinates for the airport are 39 degrees, one minute north, and 95 degrees, 13 minutes west. We can confirm this by looking at the AFD info in the chart supplement publication. They have further divided the minutes into tenths of minutes, but you can see that it's basically the same thing. Okay, quick review. Lines of longitude connect the poles. Lines of latitude encircle the Earth parallel to the equator. We can define any point on Earth where these lines cross. Let's take a look at the Houston sectional chart and apply what we just learned. 
We've zoomed into this area between the latitudes of 30 and 31 degrees. In the U.S., again, because we're in the Northern Hemisphere, these are degrees north. We're focused on the area between the longitude of 94 degrees and 96 degrees west because all of the U.S. is in the Western Hemisphere. The chart is labeled these four lines. Down the middle, we see the 95 degree line of longitude. Now recall that each degree of latitude or longitude is divided into 60 minutes. So a line of latitude is shown halfway between 30 and 31 degree lines. This represents the latitude of 30 degrees and 30 minutes. Now this is going to help you out. Lines of latitude and longitude are drawn on the sectional chart every 30 minutes. Now there's nothing magical about 30 minutes, that's just the way they're shown on the chart to make them easier to count. Here we see two additional lines of longitude, one at 94 degrees 30 minutes and the other at 95 degrees 30 minutes. Note that the lines of longitude increase in value as you move to the west and that lines of latitude increase in value as you move to the north. Because of the way they have the quadrants laid out, every single quadrant will have the lat and long labels on one of its corners. If you can find that, you can count out the coordinates for any point within the quadrant. Is this making sense to you? If not, I suggest that you pause the video and spend a couple of minutes thinking about this layout. It's really not that difficult. Remember that lines appear every 30 minutes, there are 60 minutes in each degree, and every other line is labeled. Time to zoom in again. Here's a close-up where we can work through an example. Here's the 95 degree line of longitude, and here's the 96 degree line of longitude. Halfway between them is the line representing 95 degrees and 30 minutes. The line of latitude at the top is labeled. It's 31 degrees. The line of latitude below it is unlabeled, but we already know that it's offset by 30 minutes and that latitudinal numbers get smaller going down and larger going up. So this line of latitude must be 30 degrees and 30 minutes. It's half a degree or 30 minutes less than the 31 degree line above it. Knowing this, let's find the coordinates for the Huntsville Airport. Here's the latitude line that crosses it. We can either count the tick marks down from the 31 degree line or count them up from the 30 degree 30 minute line. There's a little less clutter on the chart if we count down, so let's do that. We can see the large crossing line that measures 10 minutes right here. Five more down from that and we get the line that crosses the airport. So it's 15 minutes less than 31 degrees and 15 minutes more than 31 degrees 30 minutes. Either way, this identifies the line of latitude to be 30 degrees and 45 minutes. You have that? If not, pause the video and let it sink in. The closest line of longitude is 95 degrees 30 minutes. Longitudinal lines increase in values they move to the left or west, so we can count out five tick marks to the line of longitude that crosses the airport. And there it is. The coordinates for the Huntsville Airport are 30 degrees 45 minutes north and 95 degrees 35 minutes west. Hit the pause button and take a moment to think this through. So far, we've been thinking of coordinates in terms of degrees and minutes, but sometimes, instead of minutes, they are identified as degrees and tenths or hundreds of degrees. For example, 47 degrees and 30 minutes is the same as 47.5 degrees. Think about it. 0.5 degrees is half a degree. Since there are 60 minutes and a whole degree, a half degree is 30 minutes. Here's another one. 38 degrees and 48 minutes is the same as 38.8 degrees. Same deal as before. 48 minutes is the same as 0.8 degrees. Multiply 0.8 times 60 and you get 48. The Huntsville Airport is at 30 degrees 45 minutes north and 95 degrees 35 minutes west. Here's how we convert the minutes to hundreds of degrees. For the latitude, divide 45 by 60. That shows that 45 minutes is the same as 0.75 degrees, so the latitude is 30.75 degrees north. Likewise for longitude, divide 35 by 60 to yield 0.58. The latitude is 95.58 degrees west. Again, pause the video and run through this simple math. You will see problems on your FAA exam that indicate the lats and longs in both ways. So there's our view of the spherical world, described using the latitude and longitude coordinate system. Remember that in the United States, we're in the northern hemisphere, so all latitudes are in degrees north. We're also in the western hemisphere, so all longitudes are measured in degrees west. Each degree of latitude or longitude is divided into 60 minutes. 
On sectional charts, lines appear every 30 minutes, and each tick mark shown on those lines represents one minute. Do some practice with your own sectional chart, and this will quickly become easy work. There are a number of questions about this on your FAA written test, and there will be times in the real world where you'll need to put this into use, and you may not have your smartphone handy to bail you out. Learn it all now, and you'll never be confused by it again. If you enjoyed how we described lats and longs in this video, I can promise you that you'll enjoy the Gold Seal UAV Ground School. Using the same type of knowledge transfer, you will not only learn everything you need to know to pass the FAA exam, you'll have a great time doing it. And guess what? You're really going to like our You Pass or We Pay guarantee. If you study with us at Gold Seal and complete the program, you will pass the FAA exam. We're so confident about your success that we'll put our money behind it. If you don't pass your FAA exam on your first try, we'll reimburse you for the cost of the exam. Gold Seal has been delivering online aviation training programs since 2006, longer than anyone else. We're looking forward to having you join us at uavgroundschool.com. For Gold Seal, I'm Russ Still.